Hi, this is Graham from Genoves Astro. In this video, I'm going to compare three versions of my favourite telescope, the Celestron C5. I'm going to look at a version from the mid 70s, compare it to one from the early 80s, and then finally see how things have changed by the time we get into the mid 90s. We're going to look at the tubes and the mounts and anything else that might have varied over those 20 years. So starting with a humble lens cap, we can see that in 1976 we had a metal cap, um, some felt lining, not much else, very plain. Moving into the 80s, Celestron switched to a plastic cap like this. It's quite smart, it's got a nice easy grip. Uh, in the center here and it has the name Celestron International on the outside. So you've probably seen these on uh, C8s as well as the C5s. And by the time we moved on to the 90s, then we've gone back to metal. It's got the hammered finish and inside it has some felt and it also has a couple of indentations so it can locate on the outside of the optical tube. So, talking about paint, the early version here, it has a smooth, uh, smooth finish, and it's obviously the orange paint. Celestron moved on to using the hammered paint by the time we get here, which is 1981. And then by the time we get to the Celestron C5 Plus, which is this one here, we've got a nice white glossy finish. The finders match the um, optical tubes. Perhaps slightly more importantly, if we turn the scopes around and release the deck a little bit so we can see the front of the telescope, looking at the corrector plate, perhaps not super obvious here, but there's different coatings. So probably the major evolution effect in the performance of these scopes is that by the time we get to the 90s, we have multi-coated optics. And you can see a blue reflective sheen if you look in the right light with the more modern telescope. What else? Let's have a look at the secondaries. Well, you can see there's a metal secondary on the old scope, changing to plastic with the later scopes. The most recent one here has got some uh, collimation knobs attached, but that was obviously done um, by the original owner. Coming around the back, so the early scope is fitted to uh, supply with uh, the old size 0.965 inch uh, diagonal and eyepieces, whereas the other two scopes were supplied, certainly when I got them, with one and a quarter eyepieces. But it is worth noting that you can swap the visual back from a one and a quarter inch um, fitting to the visual back on the early scope. Now there was an earlier still evolution of the C5 uh, um, Astro, as it was called then, earlier than this one, I've not got one of those, so perhaps, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe the original visual back was slightly different again, but it appears to be basically the same size on the rear um, part of the tube. You'll probably see, or you might see, the tubes themselves, these are obviously all five inch uh, telescopes in terms of their, their mirrors, but they don't exactly match. The earlier telescope, from the 70s is a slimmer optical tube than the more recent ones. And in fact, looking more closely, there are more changes even than that. So the rear cell of the early scope looks pretty similar to this one. But once we get onto the more recent scope, you can see that it's completely different fitting for the front uh, cell and the rear cell. Totally different um, metal but obviously Celestron did quite a lot of work there, probably to accommodate the change of mount, which we'll come to. Okay, finders, well, five by 24, my favorite. 
Well, they're, they're sort of, the episodes, they're quite cute. This one, you can see from the mid 90s, it's got um, made in Japan. Probably they all were. They're sort of sufficient, just about good enough. Sometimes I swap one of these out for a red dot finder because it just makes things a little bit easier. Okay, moving on to the mounting. So if I can get this clamp to engage on the early scope, there we go. Let's talk about forks. So the scope that isn't here, the earlier one still has slightly different paint finish on the forks, but on the original scopes, they were dual forks. So two forks, one on either side. This one has holes um, in the in the forks, which I think, and they're, and they're very slim. And I think it's just really nice, nice design. Probably to save cost on manufacture, Celestron changed the design in the 80s to this, this approach. Um, and then totally different again. By the time we got to the 1990s, Celestron had gone to a single fork arrangement, which was obviously controversial at the time. People said it's not going to be stable enough. Should stick with the dual fork arrangement. But I think time has shown that really it is sufficiently robust. So the, the C5 Plus here has a single fork, albeit um, a different one. To, it's not just a single one of the, of the old scope. They didn't just take one off. And you can see as the forks meet the base, you can see that in fact, all three scopes are quite different. Which brings us on to the base. So the scope from the mid seventies has got a nice small base, uh, six and a half inches in diameter, really small, still works really smoothly. Um, and whilst we're here, you can see that this one has a plug on the side for the power. This is uh, a UK version in terms of the uh, the voltage, 220 volt. The early 80s scope, well, it's a bigger base. It, it's it's a base that's common with the Celestron C8, this, this part, I believe, at least. Uh, obviously, the fork arrangement has to be slightly bigger, but it is has gone to basically an eight inch diameter base. And then once we got the revolution underway, for the C5 Plus, it's a completely different base unit, which looks very similar to the ones you'll see on some of the other uh, scopes of the same era. So for example, the Celestar 8 basically has the same unit here, the same base. So it's bigger, it has space to accommodate the different drive arrangement. And we've gone from mains with the AC synchro motors in these two. In here, we have a nine volt battery which is powering a dc drive so that is a really big change okay weight well the older scope is the lightest the newer scope is actually heavier by about a pound or two but i think we're not really comparing eggs with eggs because you can see and we'll come on to the other sort of features here and differences you can see that this scope the c5 plus has a it's a mounting rail. It's not actually a handle. It's a rail to allow you to attach accessories, but that's quite chunky. So that's added a little bit of the weight um, to the scope. Hopefully you can just see a little bit of the blue uh, color from the coatings there. So that has added a bit of weight. Other than that, there isn't a great deal of difference. I would say that the, the old version, the oldest of these three, still means still moves the most smoothly makes the least noise is still a nice piece of mechanical uh, construction albeit like coming up 50 years after it was made what else is different well you can pick one of these up nice and easily by the forks but heaven forbid we do something really sensible we've evolved with the celestron c5 plus to have a handle i mean it's not effectively got two handles if you use the um, the accessory rail, but if you take that off to save a tiny bit of weight, if you don't need it, then you've got a nice solid handle here on the fork, which is a really, really useful feature. I think pretty well all scopes should come with handles. 
should be simple to buy an aftermarket handle, but it seems quite often it isn't. So uh, another plus for the C5 plus. Uh, what else is different? Dovetails, right? The oh, these Astro versions of the scopes, so the C5 and the C8, being dual forked, they have an arrangement where the forks are attached to the optical tube in a in effectively a bespoke mounting arrangement here, where there are uh, on either side there are a couple of screws that go into the rear cell, and that's basically the same on these two. By the time we get to the 90s, the Celestron C5 Plus switches to a standardized Vixen dovetail. So you can actually just easily detach the optical tube and put it on another mount uh, and also adjust it, slide it up and down. You've got all the benefits of a normal Vixen, or I'll call it a Vixen standard dovetail mount. So I think that was obviously a very good feature and that's carried on into the latest model. The current model, which it looks quite similar to this really in terms of it's available as an optical tube, but it's black, uh, but it still has the Vixen dovetail um, along the side of the optical tube. So what else? Um, well, that's basically, those are basically the main differences, I think. Uh, as I say, these AC, AC and DC. The uh, DC version, the nine volt motor that you've got on the Celestron C5 will run all night. You can plug in a hand controller, which I do have, but I don't tend to use. Um, and you can also connect a deck uh, motor as well onto the side if you want to make small adjustments in deck as well as RA. So that's quite a nice feature. Everything else, really just minor tweaks. So you've got the slow motion knobs on both axes really just minor changes. You've got the RA clamps and the deck clamps. Nothing has really changed there, just some detail on the actual knob here that's um, slightly different in the color. So that's it. Um, they're very good scopes. I'd say really the C5 Plus is the definitive version. Uh, because it has all the features you need. It has multi-coated optics, it has a handle, it is portable in as much as it has no need for cables, it's got a nice DC drive, and it's a decent optical size. I tend to put this onto my wedge pod, which came in my Celestron Celestar 8, which people love to hate, but it is the same base and it fits quite well, so it's nice and easy for me to use. It makes quite a nice grab-and-go setup. So I hope it's been useful, something a little different, probably in a somewhat niche hobby. This is niche within niche, but um, I like to look at these scopes and see how Celestron made small changes to go from a very good scope to an even better one. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.